Baba is telling us, sweet children, study well and show the proof of it. Do service and make others worthy. For only then will you claim a right to a high status. So you see that Baba is the highest on high and every father loves his children. He wants his child to have a high status and Baba has told us that in the world there is Riddhi Siddhi, yes, so occult power. But in Baba's Yajna, there is Vidhi Se Siddhi, means if you adopt the right method, you will succeed. And success is very long term. So you see, if somebody succeeds after 50 years, he fails for 50 years. <laughs> but then, you know, you keep moving and then you succeed. So Baba says success will be at the end, but the method to that is study well. Study well. Understand what Baba is saying. Imbibe what Baba is saying. Apply what Baba is saying. And then not only the subject of knowledge, but also the subject of yoga and the subject of divine virtues. And then Baba says, after in when you do all of this, then you also have to do service. You have to also teach others the same, either through thought, word, action, whatever. Be a part of this process of creation of a new world. And Baba says, do service and make others worthy. And you see these days, everybody has become unworthy. Yes unworthy and there is a difference between worth and price. Yes. There is a difference between worth and price, value and price. Yes. What is the difference? A price is a tag. You remove the tag they don't know the price. Yes, anything in the world, very costly, very pricey. Just remove the tag. It becomes, you know, it becomes equal to its value. Yes, so price is about the tag. Value is about what's inside. And this is a world where there is no value, there is only price. That's why people are so concerned about the tag. Yes, you know, there was this one brother and he told me that during the COVID, he said that I suffered a lot. So I said, what happened? Tell me. So he said, I loved writing and then uh, there were some reasons why you know my and because of this COVID and lockdown so whatever I wrote didn't sell so I stopped writing and now two years later my life has a vacuum and he's not in Gyan so I couldn't tell him about the higher purpose. So higher purpose for that, I told him, 
take the course you will know the higher purpose but for now since you understood that writing is what you do or writing is what you're capable of why didn't you write anyway even if you know even if it didn't sell even if there were obstacles why didn't you write anyway so it's that i got caught up in the profitability so you see we get caught up in so many things and then we lose track of what we were meant to do and this happens in the logic sense and the logic sense so baba says do service and make others worthy your worth is about who you are what's your purpose and who gives you worth baba the whole world gives you a price tag they don't give you worth baba gives you worth and baba says when you are full of worth what is the worth the qualities of the soul knowledge power purity peace happiness this is worth and baba says when you are worthy and you make others worthy by serving them by sharing with them what makes you worthy because baba is giving us jewels jewels are meant to raise your value <laughs> but am i imbibing those jewels if i am imbibing those jewels i am becoming worthy and then i won't mind the price tag what is the price tag it's the ego yes so somebody hurting your ego is like you know taking away your price tag but are you disturbed by that are you disturbed by somebody stripping off your ego because if you don't have value insight you will get very disturbed by it so baba says it's very important that you take the jewels the power the sustenance from baba and create that self worth and also teach others explain to others share with others so that they could also become worthy because you see in the end all price tags will be stripped off and then we will all be in our state of worth so you know it will be very clear so right now you know everybody is hiding behind the veil of ego and then people will say that i will remove your tag if you do this or do that <laughs> and they will scare you and threaten you but if you just hold on to your self worth you don't care about the tag then you will keep doing your thing and then in the end we are all you know naked of ego and only with our worth and then how you would look depends on what you make of yourself so this is what baba is telling us today so baba says study well pay a very good attention to study the murli the churning the yoga the virtues everything and serve serve everybody you know even when you sit in a drawing room discussion everybody is caught up in maya you know you have to this this knowledge has to go everywhere you have to teach everybody to rise above their labels titles and know who they are and learn from baba increase their value by having yoga with baba so teach everybody this because this is a world where everybody is suffering because of vices and what are vices they come as programming all vices are a programming so ego tells you that you are nothing without a label and a title 
lust tells you if you are if your sensor sensual organs are not pleased then your life is hell <laughs> that's the programming of lust what's the programming of greed the programming of greed is if you don't have this this and this then you are an unsuccessful person what is the programming of attachment if two people don't tell you i love you in a day then you are a failure or two people don't accept you telling them i love you with love then your life is a failure so baba says these things are so you know it's uh, these all these programming this is maya's programming and baba says teach everybody that you are a soul and every soul is loved by baba given worth by baba people places things appreciation praise these things don't give you worth and baba says in order to teach these things first uphold them in your life if you yourself don't uphold them in your life how will you how will you teach others worth if you are yourself not worthy if you are after the price tag how will you teach others to be worthy so baba says this is the thing and then baba says that you children have to do service and make others equal to yourself you mustn't simply remember the father but you must also do the same service that he does to remember krishna or anyone else and then not imbibe virtues like that one is of no use you don't receive any fruit from them on the path of devotion you only continue to come down by remembering the deities now there's a very important point that baba is saying today see now also baba says that remember the father and remember the inheritance right so when baba says remember the inheritance what does that mean the the picture of inheritance is shri lakshmi narayan right so baba says or you know the satyugi kingdom so baba says remember baba and remember the inheritance remember satyug and in bhakti also what we did is we, re- we remembered shri krishna so that is precisely the inheritance is it not yes but baba says in bhakti when you remembered shri krishna you didn't get anything why because you didn't remember his virtues when in bhakti you remembered shri krishna what did you remember the image or the virtues the image because you didn't know the virtues but now baba says when you remember shri lakshmi narayan you remember the lakshan yes you remember the virtues it's not the image because you know that's a soul that's a 16 celestial degrees full soul so baba says and the law says you become like the one you remember so now when you remember even shri lakshmi narayan and remember that shri lakshmi narayan as your future form because you know you're going to become that so baba says when you remember the shri lakshmi narayan as your future form and we, when you remember the qualities in them then you start becoming like them so baba says even the remembrance of shri krishna now is very different from the remembrance of shri krishna in bhakti and baba says when you remember the golden age whether it's shri krishna whether it is lakshmi narayan whether it is the satyugi culture the satyugi world anything you remember it's going to take you it's going to uplift you it's going to take you forward because 
now you are doing it with a sense you are doing it you are doing it by remembering the virtues not the picture so this is something that baba says and then baba says on the path of devotion you only continue to come down by remembering the deities now even mamma and baba are engaged in the service of giving salvation and the children who do service in the same way as the mother and father are the real children of the mother and father now you see mamma and baba all day their intellect was only busy in how do i serve the world how do i send baba's message to the world all day what pictures to create how to give the knowledge in such a way that everybody understands and baba says this is what mamma baba did and when you follow mamma baba this is what you have to do and baba says otherwise they are said to be weak if if the children are not doing this then they are said to be weak the father is also pleased when he sees that his beloved children are doing the same service that he is doing in the world children who study well are able to sit in the father's heart they earn a good income you also have to earn the spiritual income don't become happy just looking at others yes just looking at okay this one is serving so well that one is serving so well no you also have your own platform serve explain baba's knowledge i told you even in a drawing room discussion it is very important to explain the knowledge and the knowledge doesn't have to be given you know in any you know it in just you know the fixed format you know it's about changing the mindset it's about uh, tweaking their intellect towards soul consciousness and towards baba and you can do it very tactfully just connect everybody to spiritual strength and to the strength of baba and then baba says that study teach others and claim a high status for only then will the mother the father and the special beloved children praise you even if not everybody praises you <laughs> the mother and father will definitely praise you and the special beloved children will always give you blessings so this is what baba is saying today and then baba says baba says the father continues to say children don't perform any sinful acts because you see a sin makes you a sinner and when you are a sinner then you will carry that sin with you you know from one day to the next from one life to the next a sin is something that you do and then you can't delete it without adequate effort so this is why baba says take care that you don't perform any sinful acts and baba has told us that lust anger ego attachment greed yes so the most the biggest sin is lust but then there is also attachment there is also greed so first baba today says don't perform any sinful acts it is said those who steal a straw are the same as those who steal hundreds of thousands now have you seen that if you have ever stolen something you can't forget it even if it's, even as a child if you've stolen a pencil it will continue to eat your heart because you cannot whenever you you act sinfully the soul can't ignore it the soul knows it and it gets registered in the memory and then it makes you uncomfortable so baba says don't don't perform an act of sin of stealing even if it's a straw or thousands of rupees or 
Uh, these days thousands are nothing, so hundreds of thousands is nothing, these days it's much more. But I will tell you one story in this. I have earlier also I have said this story, it's very beautiful. So there was this king who hired a thief in his kingdom and he made him the treasurer. Okay, so this thief, he, well, he became the treasurer and then, uh, you know, he, and this thief had become a sadhu. So now he was put into a treasury, uh, looking after the treasury. So for many years, everything went fine. And then one day, the thief, what he did is, he was not found anywhere. So then uh, there was search uh, about, you know, what he took away, what was stolen. And then everything in the treasury was intact. So then everybody wondered, what did he run away with? He's run away, so he must have run away with something. So then, you know, in the stables, there was two haystacks which were missing. So two stacks of hay were missing from the stables. Now, everybody thought, you know, why would somebody, you know, leave everything and steal this haystack? So then um, there was the search issued, search warrant, and then, you know, he was searched and then he was brought. And then he was asked, why did you, of all the things, why did you search, search steal this haystack? Why didn't you steal the other things? <laughs> so <laughs> then he said, you know, every day, because I've been a thief, so every day I had this temptation to steal something. Every day. You know, when I saw something, I would have this thought that, you know, let me run away with this. And every day I control myself. <laughs> every day I stop myself. But then finally, one day I had an urge to steal the haystack, because every day it was a different thing. And then on that day, I couldn't stop myself, so I ran away with that. <laughs> so it's not about where it gets manifested, but if it's a sanskar, it will get manifested somewhere or the other. And then you see, I'll tell you one more thing. Sometimes, you know, people say that uh, if I have anger, then I will get angry at everything. Why was I angry at this petty thing today and I ignored so many big things? So that's not an indication that you don't have anger. <laughs> if you have anger, you will use it somewhere. If you have a sanskar, you will use it somewhere. So Baba says, don't do that. Because when that happens, then Baba says, once someone steals something, there is doubt about him for one or two years. That doubt is then erased with difficulty. You lose the trust. Then Baba says, therefore, why should you perform such acts? It is Maya that makes you perform those acts. After Maya scalps your head, ask yourself, what have I done? You then ask Baba for forgiveness. If you have done something, just go to Baba, ask for forgiveness. Tell Baba, I did this. Then what would Baba say? Okay, child. It doesn't matter now, but don't do it again. Yes, Baba will forgive you instantly. But it is good to write to Baba. Nay, so Baba says, it is good that you told Baba about your, about your mistake. Otherwise, that would have continued to increase. Some write to Baba saying, I am angry. I dirtied my face. Dirtied my face is, I engaged in lust. So Baba says, I dirtied my own face and also that of my wife. But Baba then, what, what would Baba write back? What would you think? Baba would say, it's okay. It's okay, now continue. Don't do it next time. No. In case of lust, Baba doesn't say that. Baba says, if after belonging to the father and making a promise to him, you dirty your face, and defame the name of the Brahmin clan, you are liable to receive punishment. The punishment will come and you have to face it. 
The highest on high, even higher than the deities is the Brahmin clan. So, Baba says, you will have to face the repercussions if you have dirtied your face, if you have engaged in lust, then Baba also cannot protect you from receiving a punishment. Okay, now there is a question that what if what if I, well, somebody has not done anything but you know there is false accusation. Okay, so let's say you know like Baba says that uh, don't steal or don't engage in lust or don't engage in anything. So then one thing is you do something and then it's your sin but sometimes you don't do anything but then you are defamed by somebody or accused by somebody. These are two different things. So I will tell you one thing, there was this one brother and he was telling me that he was working in a company and that company is a family uh, business, so you know, it's a family thing. But he has not been given any right in it. He works like an employee, like, like every other employee. He has been put in that position. Now what happened is, the, the in charge of the company who happens to be his brother, he wanted that he shouldn't continue in the company. So what he did is, he planted a woman and he said that uh, that woman is an employee and he gave some money to that woman and he said, you make a noise that this person is molesting you. Just create this, uh, you know, just um, falsely accuse this. And then as a company head, I will initiate the investigation and I will prove that, you know, this person is guilty. And then this brother came to me and then I said, um, see, even if that happens, it's not like your good deed will not protect you. Yes, and then some safety you have to keep. Like now that you know that he's after you and now you have come to know. So what you do is don't close your door ever. <laughs> Don't close your door, yes, keep the CCTV camera on so that everything, you know, can be proved. And even if somebody accuses you, it's okay. But an accusation is not, it's not like, you know, somebody accuses you, that's the end of everything. You can always prove that it, that you're not guilty. So he said, okay. So I said, but don't get afraid, you know, this is a world where threats, accusations, defamations, these things will happen. But you have to hold on to your truth. And uh, so, you know, but, but you know, these days what happens is, there is something called the social media trial. And you know what happens is, if somebody is after you, they want to defame you, they want to threaten you, they want to uh, make you, you know, force you into doing something you don't want to do, then what they would do is, they would just subject you to social media trial. And what is social media trial? That person will not come to the front, it's just something they'll write and spread without any proof. And then you see that uh, in this case, what happens is, people are very naive, that is why we need knowledge. And knowledge says, why do you have to, you know, participate in discussing something, thinking about something, forwarding something, spreading something, which you don't have complete idea about. But what people do is, they think that we are very wise, and we really have all the experience to sit in our armchair and you know understand everything and come to a conclusion about what is wrong, what is right, who is wrong, who is right and then they will start taking stances and doing this and that. 
So this social media trial is a very difficult situation these days. And then what happens is, in this social media trials, you see this is a threat to judiciary also because in the judiciary we have this thing that you are not guilty until proven guilty. You are innocent until proven guilty. But then in the social media trial, you are guilty as soon as somebody thinks you are guilty. So this is a challenge of these modern day times. And when these things happen, what you have to do is, you know, don't, don't start playing this game of social media trials. So if somebody accuses you, like, you know, that brother told me that this is a family matter. So what they would do is, they would put it on the WhatsApp group and they would put it on the family group and then everybody will think ill of me and this and that. So I told him, no, when somebody does that, you write to them and ask them whether they did that. Yes, so when somebody is, so somebody is telling you that somebody said so, okay. But you ask the person on your own accord whether he did that. And if they give you in writing, then only you accept that they are accepting. If they are not giving you in writing, then they are not accepting. Yes, so, you know, these things have to be understood because if somebody is not accepting, that means they are hiding something. Why are they, why, are, why is somebody uh, writing something on the social media and not writing it to you or not taking that issue up with you? So that is because they have got something to hide. So Baba says, you have to apply your senses there. Don't start participating in the social media trial game. And if somebody is accusing you on social media, you start explaining yourself on social media. Why? Why? Is that the way the law works? No, it doesn't work like that. So Baba says, this is why you have to, and don't waste your time in these things, because these fame, defamation, appreciation, putting down others, these things will go on. And do you know if you read the script, the, you, you must check out the social media trial thing on and have information about this. And then you see in that people, uh, the, the biggest thing is, it is done by people in powerful positions. This is abuse of power. So be very aware of abuse of power and the things that happen because of abuse of power. So this is sensibility that you have to exercise. So this is something that I am talking from. And then you know, Baba says, what is Maya? Maya is when you are stopped from doing what you, what Baba has told you to do when these things happen. Okay, so these, these are just situations. They don't mean anything, but they start meaning something when they start affecting your Brahmin journey. So Baba says, this is why it's very important to be careful and make choices at that time that are you understanding Baba's Gyan, are you in yoga, are you imbibing virtues, are you doing seva, and or are you getting caught up in Maya? Because Maya will always try to distract you, distract your mind, distract your body, distract your wealth from getting used in the right purpose. So Baba says, just pay attention to how Maya works and how you want to deal with Maya and how you want to be on the path that Baba has shown you. So this is something. Now, so these are two different things. So Baba says, one is sin, yes, another is law. The third thing is, you know, the accusation of sin. <laughs> so one is, one is crime, another is sin, third is accusation. Okay, so there are, these are three different things. A sin may or may not be a crime. So you see, lust is not a crime, but it's a sin. Then uh, some things are a crime, but they are not a sin. Yes, so uh, then Baba says that the third thing is 
it's neither a sin nor a crime but it's just an accusation and in that case you have to deal with the you know f defamation that comes with it and just accommodate it and move on so these are the things that baba is telling us and then in the blessing baba is telling us if someone asks you what your future is yes so does anybody ask you what your future is so there is a story about this um, future and that story is like there was this king and he had four daughters and that king always thought that i am the maker of the future of these four daughters and then uh, so i am the fortune creator right so he had this ego that i am the one who makes or breaks the fortune of my daughters and then the youngest daughter she was very sensible and then one day the do- the king asked every daughter so who feeds you so who takes care of you and then everybody says you papa you are the one who do everything for me you are the one so then the youngest said no my fortune feeds me my god feeds me so then the what the king did is next day he just he married her off to the first beggar that crossed the street <laughs> so he said that now that your fortune feeds you go and ask your fortune what is in your fortune and then what happened when the king did that the prince the beggar turned out to be a prince <laughs> so he was a prince in exile and then she again continued to be a rajkumari so baba says if someone asks you what your fortune is tell him we know that it is very good because we know that whatever comes tomorrow will be very good why because i am on baba shrimat whatever happened was good whatever happened was very good you don't have any regrets about what happened you know no knowledgeful uh, soul has any regrets any complaints about the past because you know that whatever happened is just a stepping stone for you and then baba says whatever is happening is also very good and then whatever is to happen will be very good the children who are master trikal darshis have the faith that this is the benevolent time that their father is benevolent and that they are world benefactors so there cannot be anything non benevolent for them okay so just remember that this benevolent time baba is the benevolent father is with you and then you are also world benefactors so baba says there cannot be anything not benevolent for them okay everything is benevolent for them and then baba says in order to bring the time of uh, okay i forgot one point in the murli which is very important so today baba also talked about you know this bhojan thing so food so baba today said that um you have to live at home with your families and this is why there are sometimes reports received that the husband is fighting so and so is fighting in the world there is fighting nothing else than fighting there is even fighting because of purity so in that case what do you have to do so baba says you have to take precautions about your food and drink very important because you see that this becomes a problem for many baba says the father tells you so much eat your meals by having while having remembrance because you know if you eat food in the remembrance of some person or you eat food prepared by someone then that remembrance and the energy of the one who prepares food will influence you yes um do you understand that 
when you eat food in the remembrance of Baba, then your food is filled with the power of remembrance. And then when you eat that food, that food makes your mind remember Baba more. Now if you do the opposite, you remember somebody who is giving you sorrow and you eat food in that one's remembrance, then that food goes into you and then it makes your mind connect even more to the one who gives you sorrow. And then also when somebody who is not, you know, who is not the ocean of love, not the ocean of peace, you know, even if they love you in a very uh, mundane way, that's attachment. Yes, so somebody who is filled with vice, either attachment or greed or lust or whatever vice, if you eat food prepared by them, then that vice will become your vice also. So this is why Baba says, take very good care of your food and drink. If you are living with, you know, you're living in an antagonistic environment and in that environment, you know, others, other people are trying to influence you. So one way of influencing your mind and a very powerful way of influencing your mind is food. So take very good care that you always stay under the canopy of Baba and only allow Baba to influence you. And for that, you have to eat, cooked, eat food cooked in Baba's remembrance, served in Baba's remembrance and accept it in Baba's remembrance. OK, 